Well, good day, everybody, and uh, welcome back. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar, and I'm just going to pick up. This is video number three on um, a specific way of treating aspirin overdose. And I think we're kind of ready to start now. Um, so when we talk about aspirin or, or uh, salicylic acid, uh, the basic chemical uh, formula is C9H8O4. Okay, that's the basic. And we know that this aspirin, or it, you may see it uh, symbolized or shorthanded as ASA, that means aspirin, is in fact a weak acid, as are other medications. But we're going to talk about aspirin here. Okay, it's a weak acid. Uh, so, when we have weak acids, and um, like aspirin, an interesting thing can happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw you a picture here. And we're just going to really make it super simple. All right, here we go. So I want you to imagine that I have two different aqueous environments here. Aqueous environment here and an aqueous environment here. And this environment over here to the left is within the stomach. It's within my stomach. All right. This is within my stomach. And over here is in my blood. All right. This is in my blood. Now, in my stomach, we know that we have lots of hydrochloric acid. And so it should come as no surprise that the pH within the stomach is very low, okay? A very low pH. Uh, the pH in the blood, however, is much higher than the pH in the stomach. The pH in the stomach is, we'll say, approximately 2. I'm not quite exactly sure what it is. I'd have to look it up, but it's right around 2. And the pH in the blood is um, quite a bit higher and the pH of the blood is going to be higher, and it's going to be approximately um, it's going to be approximately seven point four, give or take a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, but certainly much higher than the pH of the stomach. Now, here's an interesting thing about aspirin as a weak acid. Aspirin in an acidic environment, acid in an acidic environment like the stomach, actually at, at that particular pH, um, is going to tend to stay in a non-ionized form. Okay, so aspirin does not dissociate as much in, an acid, in the acidic environment of the stomach. Okay, so aspirin if you remember the A and um, A and B analogy that I used, uh, let's go ahead and just do that here. So here I have aspirin. Aspirin is going to stay in its non-ionized form, the AB form, if you will, okay, in the stomach. Now, an interesting thing about membranes. So here's the, a membrane, right? This is the the lining of the stomach, the, the stomach mucosa. We simplified it. When you look at a membrane, a membrane takes on the basic structure of a phospholipid bilayer. So I'll just kind of draw the, the just a basic structure, a phospholipid um, bilayer here. And then here we go. All right, and it's not too terribly bad. Okay, so this is maybe the stomach here and this is the blood over here, and this is the membrane. And the membrane has basically two components. It has these phosphorus heads here, this phosphate group heads, and then these lipid tails here. Now an interesting thing about lipid tails is lipids are, are fats, basically, and they're just really long chains of carbons and hydrogens, CH, you know, CH, 2, C, H, you know, really long, long chains of, of carbons and hydrogens. And um, these long carbon-hydrogen chains tend to be non 
polar. Okay, they are non-polar uh, chains, tails. Now, polar substances are substances that are charged or substances that are ionized tend not to penetrate membranes very well or very easily or very efficiently. Why is that? That is because a charged substance does not interact with a non-charged or a non-polar um, molecule very well. Um, that's the reason that oil and water don't mix very well. Oil is non-polar, right? It's non-charged. Water is polar. It is charged. And they don't chemically interact very well. Um, the net dipole um, moment on um, something like a long lipid change is, is very small. There isn't a big net dipole moment. Not a whole lot of charge. It's non-polar. Whereas water definitely has a distinct separation of charge. Well, that creates an interesting situation. So, um, here we go. We know that Polar molecules don't tend to penetrate membranes as easily, but nonpolar molecules do. So here we have our aspirin that's in the stomach in the acidic environment, and we know that it, 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 um, due to its properties, and we'll talk about those properties here in just a little bit, um, it has to do with the pKa, I'll give you a hint. Um, Acid will remain within a it may remain in its non-ionized form in the stomach. Okay, so what happens? Well, it can penetrate the membrane. So aspirin can penetrate the membrane and get into the blood. Okay, but what has happened in the blood? The pH of the blood has changed markedly, significantly. And now in the very alkaline environment of the blood, the very basic environment of the blood, um, aspirin can no longer remain in its non-ionized form, but rather in the presence of an alkaline environment, aspirin will ionize, so it will turn into its acid form, and obviously you'll have your conjugate base. Okay, it ionizes. Well, here's the thing. What did I say about ionized or charged or polar substances? Polar substances do not penetrate membranes. So now, if that aspirin wanted to get back into the stomach, it could not do it because it can't penetrate the uh, membrane. Okay. So this membrane is what we call a charge selective. It's charge, it is charge selective and only allows non-charged substances through um, due to its physiological properties that we talked about here. And then certain substances like aspirin become charged or ionized in the blood and those ions cannot get back through and into the stomach and this produces a phenomenon known as phenomenon known as ion trapping. Okay, ion trapping. It is an ion trapping mechanism. The aspirin is trapped in the blood because it's in its ionized form. Um, this is uh, one of the mechanisms of absorption. Um, that occurs with aspirin, uh, among others, but I really what I wanted you guys to do is to be able to understand the concept of ion trapping, why that happens, and that it has to do with pH changes, okay, particularly the alkaline pH of the blood. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut it off here, and then I'm going to take us from this concept of ion trapping into one of the ways that we can look at um, treating um, aspirin overdose. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.